All right, hey there everyone, how we all doing? Today I wanted to go ahead and bring you a quick little setup tour of my two PC setup that I use for creating all of my content both on YouTube and on Twitch. This has been a long time coming and I've been waiting for a lot of parts to come in. I've been waiting to build a second PC and get the whole room kind of furnished for the most part the way I want it. So everything isn't quite finished yet, but we're close enough so I thought I'd go ahead and get started here. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a nice DSLR like most people that do setup guides. I'm only recording on my three-year-old cell phone, so I apologize if the quality is not quite what you're used to from other channels, but this is the best I can muster at the moment. Um, I will be trying to stick to sitting at my desk and use my studio mic for the majority of this, just so the audio quality is good, but we're actually gonna break from that right from the start here uh, as we get into the PCs. Um, so, and again, white balance might be awkward as well, so be trying to stay on top of that. I apologize if some sections look weird, but uh, we'll go ahead. We're going to step away from the mic. I want to show you the two PCs here first, and then we will go ahead and migrate back to the chair, back onto the mic, and starting to talk about the actual setup here. So, first things first, let me get this light turned on. This is a streaming PC on the left here in this big case. This is a Corsair Obsidian uh, 750B. Um, this is housing a 5960X, which is, when it was brand new, cost a good thousand dollars. It is a very expensive, very monstrous CPU. I believe it's uh, 8 cores, 16 threads. Um, this is OC'd to 4.1 gigahertz, which is actually quite low for overclocks on this particular CPU, but I've not worked very hard to get it that high, so, I mean, that's, that's like the first overclock I did and it works and it's more than good enough to encode a 1080p 60fps on medium, uh, which is fantastic. I don't really need to go uh, any any faster than that. I kind of, or rather any slower than that. I kind of can't. Even if I OC this thing to 4.5, 4.6, 4.7, I doubt that it will be able to handle 1080p 60 on slow encoding. So happy with what we have there. And I apologize for the shine. It's just, my phone's camera has, um, uh, a big crack along the actual camera lens. Well, not the lens, but the glass housing. So yeah, it got the Elgato in there for the stream setup since this is a streaming PC. 1200 watt PSU because, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and then uh, we have here for the SSD, just a quick 128 gigabyte uh, Kingston drive. It's nothing special. Um, that's 32 gigs of RAM in there. I don't remember if I mentioned. And then this is a 770 for the video card. This PC is not used for gaming at all. So, the graphics card doesn't matter. I know 770 is pretty old and not that good anymore, but it's enough to drive a single 1080p monitor. I think it's much more than enough for that. Now, this second PC here, this is the gaming PC. This is what I've had for quite a while and it's been seeing a lot of upgrades. And this is the second PC that's actually been built in this case. Got the sick gamer lights on those front fans there. This is a Corsair uh, Carbide 400R case. Um, it wasn't it's not the best case in the world, but it was cheap and it works just fine. Uh, it's a nice kind of, a little bit better than your standard budget case. Now this is going to be really awkward. And if this, is, if this section doesn't work, then I'm sorry. But here uh, should be the CPU along with the cooler on it. So both of these CPUs are cooled by Corsair um, H100i coolers. This is a V2 in here and it's probably a V1 in the uh, stream PC. But we also have another 32 gigs of Corsair Vengeance RAM. Uh, that is standard across both systems. Down below here is the GTX 1080 uh, Founders Edition. It's not a TI, it's just a regular 1080 um, wood, but this is, was the best on the market when I got it, and this was given to me by EA, so thank you to EA for that, I appreciate it. Corsair RMA 50 for the PSU, and ooh, I've got to clean this PC case out. It's a little bit grody in there, but that's all right. You guys don't need to see that in, in disgusting detail. So back in the chair here. So the only things that I really didn't talk about for this PC is just storage. I mean, I have a crap ton of storage drives in there and they're just all piled away in there. You don't need to know the nitty gritty on them, but that's what we got. So here we have these two monitors, this one in the middle here that you can see my recording going on now in Sony Vegas and um, this monitor on the left here. They're both 1440p. They're both 27 inch monitors. 
and they are both attached to the gaming PC. So this middle screen here where Vegas is, that is where the majority of my work is done. So I work, I do all my editing and everything on this monitor. I do all my gaming on this monitor. This one is just for my extra stuff, for my internet browser, for Twitch chat, for OBS, when I'm um, doing a full screen projector from that, which uh, more details on in another video when I go through my stream setup. But just for the overall PC setup, I mean, that's just the basics are what go on that screen and then the games and everything cool go there. So we'll move on to the rest of the hardware on the desk here. This keyboard is wireless. This is uh, both a keyboard and mouse combo. You can use it on smart TVs, whatever. I plug it in my smart TV downstairs sometimes. But uh, as of now, this is permanently plugged into the streaming PC. This is what I use for the stream. So it's usually tucked away underneath that um, monitor there or wherever it goes, sometimes on the floor. And then I just pull it into my lap or pull it you know, right down here wherever. Um, whenever I need it. So that is just to run the stream and it's really not necessary for anything more than that. So it's just kind of off to the side there. Here for my main keyboard, this is a mechanical keyboard. This is a Ducky TK2108 maybe if I'm wrong or DK2108, something like that. Mechanical Cherry MX Red switches. Got the custom keycaps for WASD as well as for escape. Simple stuff. Uh, no gamer lights. I really don't like the gamer lights. So that is all well and good there. Uh, here we have my alternate mic. This is the Blue Snowball. This is what I used for many years back when I first started my YouTube channel. This is the microphone that started it all. So it's very grody and dirty and dusty and uh, <laughs> it uh, gets the job done. So I'll talk about more about why I have two mics set up uh, when I get to the stream PC or rather the streaming setup guide that I'm going to do later. But suffice it to say that I need this mic and I wish I didn't, but the way that everything is set up, I do kind of unfortunately need it. So it's there for uh, for Discord and for talking to people outside of my stream. Main monitor here. Or rather, I should probably tell you guys about this monitor, huh? So this is a Qnix QX2710 LED. This is a 1440p 60 hertz PLS panel. So PLS is basically Samsung's version of an IPS, and a lot of people say it's a little bit better. Uh, I don't really... I can't say that I can tell the difference, but that's what people say about it. And um, it's a good little monitor. It was pretty cheap. It's kind of a knockoff, but I got it many years ago before 1440p 144 hertz monitors were commonplace. And the few that did exist were extremely expensive. They were far out of my price range. So this was the fantastic solution for the time being, and I like it very, very much. I'm very happy with this purchase. Um, what I recommended today maybe maybe not i'm not sure what the price actually will end up being today but you can get one of these guys the acer predator xb 271 hu which is a native 1440p 144 hertz g-sync overclockable ips the whole everything every statistic ever it pretty much has uh, besides like hdr i mean this this guy you can get for 600 dollars refurbished and um, that is straight from acer and if you don't want to buy a refurb, then it's $800 from Amazon. So this is a really good monitor for the price. It does a lot. But the cool thing about this one, what makes it interesting, which I didn't mention, is that this monitor, this Qnix Korean knockoff, is overclockable. And my monitor is actually pretty good among the spectrum of what overclocks are achievable. I'm able to go to 110 hertz on this panel, and it runs just fine. Now... You lose brightness, you lose color depth, and uh, it's kind of a slow pixel response time, so you get some ghosting on this monitor, but I don't know, man. If you get it for cheap and you're on a huge budget and you really need 1440p, this is a fantastic solution uh, for 60 hertz. And if you want to go above, you can, but it's a, it's a pretty good monitor, uh, I will say. I have not had any problems with it, and it's a Samsung panel after all, so that is absolutely... Um, a really important part of the equation here. Um, we'll go. I guess we'll go ahead and just cover this last monitor. This is a Samsung SyncMaster P2370 HD. It's a very, very old display. Um, but it's actually really neat in that it has a TV tuner in it. So you can plug it in for your PC or you can put a coax cable in and watch, uh, watch some basic cable on there. So that's really, really nice. Um, I used to use that in college. I've had this monitor since high school, so that's been many, many, many years now. But 
Uh, back in the day when I got this, this monitor was the shiznit because you could do all that stuff. It was perfect for a dorm room. You can plug your Xbox in, you can plug your laptop in, and you can plug your TV in, and you can do everything on this one display. It was really good. It was really, really good. And it had a game mode on it, too, for gaming. So it was, like, this one, This monitor was, like, the cream of the crop for the functionally inclined gamer kind of in, like, you know, back in six, seven, eight years ago. Um, and it's a great little display. I don't think they sell them or make them anymore, but... I love this thing, and I'll keep it forever. And before you guys ask, what's up with those stickers? Yeah, I, there's Scooby-Doo stickers on here. Back in high school, an old uh, an old girlfriend, she liked Scooby-Doo, and she had all these stickers, and she put Scooby-Doo stickers on here, and I just have never... I mean, I've tried to take this one off, but they are just stuck on there like the devil, and I cannot get them off, and I kind of don't care enough about them to actually put in a lot of effort in clearing them off, so they're just kind of staying there. So you, you guys can, I guess, just deal with it. I don't know. So mice, this is for the stream PC. This is um, usually sitting and living down here, but whenever I need it for the stream, it'll just come up in the corner here and, you know, whatever. This is a Rocket Cone Pure Military Edition. Um, this is an optical sensor in the, in the Rocket Cone Pure. Very, very, very good mouse. The, I love the mouse wheel. It's got this really fantastic responsive clicking uh, feel to it. The side buttons are perfect. They're in the right spot. They're great for a big hand. Even my huge hands, which, by the way, like when I try to palm it, like my fingers drag on the thing in front if I try to palm it the right way because my fingers are just too long. So it's a good mouse, but I have huge hands, and it's not acceptable for me. So this has been relegated to a side, just my side PC. Here is my main real mouse with the gamer lights on. I don't like gamer lights, but they're fine for stream, so they're there. This is a Rocket Cone EMP. So this is pretty much the exact same mouse as this guy, but bigger with a different finish on it and heavier. This is like 110 grams compared to, I believe, roughly 90 or 95 for this one. So it's, a, it's definitely very appreciably heavier, heavier. Excuse me. And the cool thing about Rocket Mice, which most people don't like, but I personally do, and I don't know, I don't know if this is going to show up well on the video, and I apologize if it doesn't, but... You can kind of see here that shape on the side where there's that big cutout for your thumb, right? It's not flat, but it's concave, and your thumb just sits in there. And it's very comfortable. It's a very natural position for your thumb. And your thumb will never, ever drag on your mouse mat as long as your thumb is in that little concavity there. And it's really nice. So I love Rocat mice for that particular reason. Um, and I'll probably always use them because of that. It's just so comfortable. I love the shape. A lot of people don't like the mouse because of the shape, and they're not wrong for that, but I personally love the shape, so I would recommend that you give them a try if you've never tried one of these mice before. Mouse Mat. This is a Steel Series uh, QCK Heavy. It's, I believe, 15 inches in width and height. I don't know, probably also 15 or close to that. It looks relatively square. Um, good mouse mat, very heavy, doesn't move. Uh, I don't know. Not much to say. It's a mouse pad, you know? Down here. This is a Scarlet Solo. Maybe, actually, maybe I can turn the... Well, actually, what if I turn this? And then turn it up on high. There we go. That's much better. Okay, so this is a Focusrite Solo, uh, Scarlet Solo. This is for plugging in XLR... Can we ever focus? There you go. Maybe? Uh, ah, there we go. Kinda, sorta, close enough. All right. This is for plugging in XLR microphones into a PC, since it doesn't actually really have XLR inputs. So this was really the entire purpose of it, is just to plug this one microphone in. It has a secondary line in if you have a secondary line in device, and uh, you can also do direct monitoring on it, which is cool. Not necessary, but it is a thing. This guy here is a Ulong Y100 DAC and amp. That is where my studio headphones are plugged into. Makes your headphones sound really nice and cool. So my headphones, DT990 Pros. These are made by Bayer Dynamics. They're 250 ohm impedance. Uh, they sound really great. They're not, the impedance isn't so high that they cannot be driven by smartphones. So you can absolutely use this like in the airport or on a plane with your phone. I do all the time uh, with all my traveling that I've been doing in the past year or so. Really, really, really fantastic microphone or uh, headphones. These will run you a few hundred dollars. I think I spent 300 bucks for these puppies, but they are a really, 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 really good pair of headphones. They're open back in design. They sound fantastic. 
all your music is going to sound great. Um, but if you're a big bass head, I would definitely suggest you get the 770s instead of the 990s because those are closed back. And you're going to get a little bit better bass response with a closed back headphone. But if you like rock, you like electronic music that's not super duper insanely bass heavy like me, DT990s are probably a really, really great place to start your um, super ridiculous microphone journey. So, or rather your super ridiculous headphone journey. So, let's go ahead and talk microphones because I keep just having that on the brain here. This, and I don't know if the white balance is going to work right or not, kind of don't think it will just because there's so much white behind the screen right now. I'll just turn the light on and cheat. This is an Audio-Technica AT2035 um, condenser microphone. So, very simple. Just microphone, it's got the little shock mount there so it can wiggle and the microphone can, sh uh, can shake freely and a lot of that won't be transferred into the recording. Pop filter in front, which you need, especially forced for a uh, condenser mic, but for every mic you should have one. Um, mounted up to this big old arm here, which again, I don't know if the lighting is gonna just agree with me or not. Kinda, sorta. It's a really cheapo arm from Amazon. Um, not my favorite the thing in the world. I really would like a better microphone arm that could potentially, you know, come like up like this and then over and then like hang the microphone up here because this thing is just not long enough. And I would like a third point of articulation here, sir, so I could really, really um, get it, get the arm out of the way and then have the mic over me or just in a spot that's not as intrusive as directly in front of me like this. Now, I'm not that short. You know, my head is up here, right? This is where I'm actually viewing the, the everything from. So like I can see over my whole setup just fine, right? Like the arm and stuff does not conflict with my ability to interact with my screens. But I don't know. It's it's just kind of a nice thing since I'm a little bit on the taller side, so that does help. But yeah, so we'll go ahead and flip this light down here. So this is, I don't even know the brand of this, but if anyone's interested, I can link it in the description of this video, I suppose. This is a clip uh, a clip on light, so it clips onto my arm here. But it's just a big, really tight alligator clip. So that's just where that goes, is right on there, because I find it very convenient, especially if I go like this. And this is gonna, I don't know if this is gonna work well, but if you fold the arm away like this, then the light kind of goes up. You see kind of how it, like when the, how the action goes, like when this second part of the arm goes back, my light comes up. You know, so now it's like everything is just still out of the way. So I really do like the action of how everything kind of kind of comes together with that. So that's kind of how the setup works there. And I apologize for bumping the mic while recording. I'm, I know I'm the worst and I'm a low quality creator, whatever. Sue me. But there we go. Close enough. So that is pretty much the setup there. Um, this desk is made by Souter. This is... Uh, executive desk a souter executive i don't know i think there's a couple more words in there but i don't remember what it is but that's the that's the basics of it um might as well do a water bottle tour this is a uh, yeti water bottle this is very 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 good at keeping your drinks either warm or cold or whatever and uh, i don't know it's a good 32 ouncer got your good old-fashioned pen and paper for writing down ideas video stuff whatever but that's pretty much it for the setup here. That's kind of the whole thing. That's where, This is where the magic is made. So um, I think probably in a couple of days here, I will go ahead and do a video explaining the actual stream setup and how everything interacts with each other. But uh, for the time being, I think this will pretty much suffice just as a quick guide or uh, I guess a setup tour. Yeah, setup tour. Sure, why not? So if you guys have any questions about any of the stuff featured here, uh, how I use it or whatever, Leave me a link or leave me a question down in the comment section down below. I'm happy to help you guys out and get those answered for you. But anyways, guys, yeah, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you next time. Take care, dudes. Oh, actually, you know what? I lied. We're not done yet. We're not. Because this is a very important part of the setup. This here, this chair, this beautiful piece of furniture. This is an, a Herman Miller Aeron computer chair, all right? This is expensive. You Google this, it's gonna cost you a grand. But you gotta keep in mind, I am a content creator. I stream on Twitch, I, I make videos on YouTube. I spend a crap load of time in front of this whole setup here. Let me turn that light off. I turn a lot of time in this room. So I really, really need to have a good chair. Like a, the best chair I could possibly have. Like 
DX Racer and stuff like that makes like really cool gaming chairs, and those are fine. But like this, this is the the mecca of computer chairs. This is extremely comfortable and very much so more healthy for your back and for your body than pretty much any other chair out there on the market, except a few other super expensive ones like this. So um, mine has got pretty much all the trimmings, all the fixings. It's got like you know the, the tilt lock and. All this other stuff. I mean, I'm not going to go through a whole big spiel on my chair, but like this thing is worth the price. Like if you're a content creator, you're someone who spends a lot of time in front of your computer. This is furniture for your house. Right? Like if you get a chair that goes in your living room, that'll cost you anywhere from six hundred to two thousand dollars, right? And a lot of people spend, have absolutely no qualms in spending two grand for a chair that lets them sit on their butt and watch TV all day. So like. This chair that lets me create and lets me be comfortable and healthy while creating is a no-brainer. It is worth the investment. So if you're a person that works in an office, that does computer work, you're a person that stays at home and you do Twitch streaming, you, I, I cannot like recommend any more this chair to you guys or a similar chair. It's worth your time and effort and money in getting something like this for your office because, trust me, your body will thank you. And that is absolutely one of the most important things you can do is take care of your body. Anyways, guys, my voice is absolutely dying, as you can hear. I've been talking for 20 minutes straight without stopping, and my throat hates it. So we're going to go ahead and cut this off. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.